Let's go. We're back in New Vegas, baby. Today we're going to be doing the Dead Money DLC, which is actually one of the worst and hardest I've played now that I'm editing back over it. But we just go ahead and go right through this door. We take our first few steps inside of the doorway and... So after being put to sleep, are you we are forced to listen to this old man go on a yap session for the next 20 minutes. I kid you not, this guy would not stop talking. So the cliff notes of his little speech were that we are wearing a bomb collar, and there's three other people in this town that are also wearing bomb collars that are going to go ahead and go inside that casino on the hilltop and get some money. Try to leave. I set off your collar. We also get introduced to the vending machine specifically made for this DLC using a currency we find all around the map. So after pulling out a mystery weapon, I realize they stole every last item from my pockets. Follow, oh, where is she? Watch out for the villain inhabitants. They're difficult to kill unless you chop them apart. Oh man, oh man, was this guy right? But we finally take him down just to find out he's not even dead. He's just resting. So I start with the theme of this DLC, which is running away. But we finally make it to our first quest destination, where we meet another challenge that will plague this DLC. Speakers and radios interfere with the bomb caller frequency and can trigger the detonators. So basically, if there's a radio on around you, you will explode. So you have to find all the radios and turn them off when you walk by. But we continue to explore the police station extra crisp until we get to the basement door where we find a creepy voice telling us that his voice is on the holotape that's me there on the table the disc my voice we use the holotape to power up dog our new companion dog back in the cage what have we here when i tell you this companion loves to talk i mean this dude yapped for a full 20 minutes of dialogue before i got him out of the cage the main spiel from this guy is that there are two personalities in his body, dog and god, and the holotape activated the god side, and this is the one we'll be seeing for most of the time. But we finally team up with our new companion. Whoa! That is a big fella. That is a large motherfucker. Who's extremely helpful in taking on the ghosts. He's ass. He also helps me learn that if you destroy oh a limb god. on the ghost, they actually die, but not like they have anything worthwhile anyway. Holy shit! Nevertheless, we continue searching for the other two collar wearers in the villa. Right behind you. The idiots, the idiot, the idiots hunger screws it up. Really hope this guy doesn't repeat that shit the whole time. That we also discovered that there's poisonous gas throughout the streets that'll eat your health. Uh, uh. Eventually coming face to face with our second companion, Dean, a classy ghoul who knows how to put it on. This guy's vibing, dude. Dude, like, you can't fuck with this dude. He's just not. Dog dude. also continues the exact same voice lines as usual. His collar. Shut up! So we end up taking a seat next to him, only to learn that he's actually strapped bombs to our fucking ass cheeks. By the way, don't get up or make any sudden motions, no matter how uncomfortable that chair gets. The cushion's just for show. We finish up the dialogue and get Dean to join us, walking around for another 20 minutes before we make it back to the main area, eventually bringing Dean back to the fountain to help assist in our heist. We quickly stomp out some more ghosts on the way to the third companion, Knock his whole skull off. where we turn off the power and meet our new mute companion. Hey dog, get out of the way, I'm trying to talk here. But we bring her back to the fountain to join the rest of the crew, where we talk to our captor slash leader, who then gives us a quest to send all three of these guys back to different parts of the map. Yippee. So we start with Dean, the classy ghoul, going to the brink of our sanity and then buying every stim pack possible, but eventually making it to school and dropping little Dean off. Alright, I'll stay here. Good. So next up, we need to take Dog to his location. So we grab him, but it turns out he needs a little lunchbox if he wants to stay in this little substation. Dog, uh, dog's been good to us, but I low-key don't want to fucking go kill these fucking bat. Like, so we go ahead and kill a couple of these ghost wanderers and grab their itty bitty remains. Grab straight up, straight up. So we feed Dog his little ghost remains and complete his You're quest. Welcome. Going back to get the final companion, the mute lady. All right which we then deliver to her little spot and complete. 
and complete the last quest. The bell tower. Yes! That was a lot of dumb fetch quests, to be real. Bell tower and activate it. All right, well, time to go fetch another, another quest. Now we start heading towards the bell tower. Getting abused every inch along the way. What is this? Who set up a hundred traps? Motherfuck. Are we done? Are we done with the bear traps? Get out of my way, hologram. But eventually we do make it to the bell tower to see our hard work. Yippee! Yippee! That's it. But after seeing a quick light show, we are heading to the casino, only to pass out on the front steps. But hey, at least we made it into the casino now. Let me give you a hand. <laughs> so now we finally get to take a break from the fetch quest to go ahead and fetch the three different characters from the casino. Fantastic. I didn't do it. All right, I'm just a guy. But at least it'll be a little easier. Damn, homie said. What are you gonna do about it? What the fuck? Bro said, by the powers invested in me, late. So we meet one of the first enemies inside of the casino. Holograms that shoot lasers out of their foreheads. But it's alright, because these little blue bulbs allow us to turn them off, helping us maneuver around the casino. Also making sure to get the scattered loot around the casino. I just saw it. Unlock safe. Dude. For now, it was mostly just exploring the area. That legitimately scared the fuck out of me. So we turn off the last hologram and end up turning the casino power on. So finally, we can get to the important part. Gambling! Hello! After quite a decent bit of luck, we end up using the vending machine to boost our inventory and get some weapon mods. Going to finally confront Dog in the casino kitchen. If you do this, we... All fire now. No! So now was the challenge of turning off three gas lines without being spotted by dog. Luckily, uh, I did a first try. After we go and confront dog, we end up going through a dialogue prompt and finishing up in the kitchen. About it. Moving on to Dean, the smooth ghoul. I'm sorry. Boom, right in the mouth. You're we immediately mark him in the stairway of the theater. You're nothing, Dean. Nothing but a stain on the wall. And finally, we get to talk to our mute companion who helps us get into the vault we originally came to heist from. Luckily, the vault was actually very easy. We've made it to the vault. Bye. So after easily making it to the vault and finishing our heist journey, we find about a million caps worth of gold. Oh. But the guy who put our bomb collars on isn't quite happy that we want it all for ourselves. He decides to come down and we get a new objective that I find very interesting. Defeat Elijah. Sneak out of the vault's chamber area undetected, trapping Elijah when he opens the vault. So we steal the thousand pounds of gold and get ready to sneak by. Oh boy, open it. Crouch, just start the walk. Go. Go. <laughs> Ah! Instantly. After some it? trial and error, we finally end up leaving the bum in the vault. Turn on. It's gonna turn on. It's gonna turn on. It's gonna turn on. It's gonna turn on. Oh. And complete the worst DLC in Fallout history. Get fucked, nerd! You 
You've heard stories of the Sierra Madre Casino. Not the hard part. It's letting go. Wait a moment. No, I don't think I will. 